Hello and welcome to the No Easy Way Out podcast. My name is Tony Nash and we are coming to you as always from the armory in beautiful downtown Owasso, Michigan, home to my company, AZ Business Solutions, where we help grow your brand from A to Z. Now I'm joined today by the owner of a local uh, store here in Owasso, Aviator Jane, and her name is Mandy Pydick. Mandy, thank you for being on the show today. Thanks for having me, Tony. All right, Mandy, we're excited about having you on our show today. I know you and I haven't uh, spent a lot of time getting to know each other. I know your husband a little bit more, and we'll talk about him in just a little bit because he's not here to defend himself. <laughs> but uh, what is Mandy Pydick up to these days? Oh, gosh. Well, um, raising two beautiful little girls and... Um, gosh, things are really fast paced right now. Mm -hmm. Um, just really preparing for as a, a, an owner of a retail space, we're really already thinking about Christmas yeah. and planning for the Is new it already year. Already time to start thinking about ah, Christmas. Wow. I know it's kind of nauseating, but <laughs> my wife you know, probably loves it. She starts playing Christmas music like in July. <laughs> Yeah, so just yeah. kind of preparing for what's to come. Very cool. And fall is coming up. That's yeah. everybody's favorite season if you're from Michigan. <laughs> but, um, okay, so I want to do something right now where we on the show that we call This or That. Okay. So I'm going to give you 10 rapid-fire questions, and I'm just going to give you two choices. You throw out the one that is the honest truth about Mandy Pydek, and this is going to tell our audience everything they need to know about you. So oh, great. are you ready for this? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Go for it. All right, ready? Here we go. Mac or PC? Mac. Phone call or text? Text. A good book or a good movie? Good movie. Save or spend? Save. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Time or money? Time. Facebook or Instagram? Instagram. Spring or fall? Spring. You're a spring girl. Yeah, yeah. All right. City life or countryside? Ooh, this is hard. It's a tough one. Uh, right now, um, country life. Okay. And that could also depend on the season too, right? Oh yeah, it totally does. <laughs> Night owl or early bird? Can neither be an answer? <laughs> can midday, midday be yeah, an that, answer? That's like your that's your prime time midday. <laughs> yes. I can get that. All right, passenger or driver? Oh, passenger. Passenger? Oh yeah. You like to go along for the ride? Yep, everyone prefers that I'm a passenger. All right, well good job. See, that was easy. That was painless. Yeah. Now you didn't even realize you just told us everything we needed yeah, to that's know. That's everything. So. I, are we done? <laughs> <laughs> no, we got a long way to go yet. We got a long way to go. So what do you want people to think of when they think of Mandy Pydick? I and mean, you came into a new community <laughs> and we'll talk about your journey and um, you married a gentleman that was already very well known in our community. And so probably to some people you're known as Nick's wife. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you want people to think of when they think of Mandy Pydeck? Yeah, that's a kind of a tough question, but um, I guess I hope that when they think of Mandy Pydeck, I hope that people are inspired mm -hmm. and that um, my life in some way, shape, or form inspires people to think big, mm -hmm. to dream big, dream and big. yeah, go after their dreams in life. Yeah. Well, I know that a lot of us in Owasso especially could say honestly that we are all inspired by you and your husband. Mm. You guys have done some great things in our community and for our community. You guys have been very involved and we love it. Um, and so I want to kind of start to talk about your journey because like I said, you're kind of um, new to Owasso yeah. or newer. Mm -hmm. So give our audience kind of an idea about kind of where you grew up and kind of how you ended up here yeah. in the middle of the mitten in Owasso, Michigan. My gosh, what a story. Um, I mean, I guess to me, it feels like quite a story, but I was born in Ohio, Cuyahoga Falls. It's Are you a Buckeye fan? No. Okay, thank you. I'm not, but I'm not really much of a <laughs> fan of That's okay. either side. I'm okay. I would rather you not be a sports okay. fan than be a fan of the Buckeyes, so we're good. We're good. <laughs> oh, man. So born in Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio. It's right outside of Akron. Okay. When I was <clears throat> 11, my dad got a job. He's a pilot um, in Midland, Michigan. Right. So we moved there, and that's where I spent the majority of my life and met some of my very best friends to this day. Uh, my time in Midland was just completely life-changing. Midland is awesome. I like Midland. It is, it's yeah. It's a cool little town. Yeah, yeah, it's changed a lot since I've moved. Sure. I'm Dramatically, sure. actually. Yeah. Um, and so I've, I've had this buddy named Nick Pydek. Um, we've been friends for over 10 years. Uh, we met at church, at a church conference mm -hmm. in Midland. And his group of friends came and my group of friends introduced ourselves and we became fast friends. And over the following 
10 years. Mm -hmm. We uh, did a lot of ministry together, did a lot of life together, did a lot of music together. You both sing, yeah. Yeah, we both sing and play instruments. And uh, that was really the thing that kept bringing us back together um, through 10 years of life. And uh, then one day we started viewing each other as more (laughs) than friends. And Who got out of the friend zone first? Oh, he did. (laughs) He sure did. Yeah. (laughs) It took me a little bit of time to get on board with that. But um, we, we have such a crazy story. But to make a long story short... Yeah, we once the lights turned on in that way, things kind of moved quickly, and yeah. um, we got mar- We got engaged six months after we started dating, and then uh, we yeah we got married, and uh, my that marriage brought me here to Owasso. Then you hit the gas pedal. Yeah, my yeah. gosh, I moved here to Owasso, left my friends, my family, my jobs, the church that I loved, the community that I loved, um, but it was. Um, I, I tend to be, or I, I used to be quite cautious when it came to making big life decisions like this. Mm-hmm. And, but there was nothing but clarity and peace with this idea of marrying this man. Yeah. And this man who, by the way, was n- nothing that I thought I wanted or needed <laughs> in life. Um, but there's That's just, usually how it works out. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. So, but there was such a, a peace and clarity in yeah. that direction. So I just followed that peace and, uh, so I ended up in Owasso with hardly any friends O-town. and much smaller town. And yeah. I went from having this very full, very active life in Midland to having like nothing. Yeah. It's a and big transition. Yeah. It was a huge transition. It was, it felt like home right away though. Mm-hmm. It did. Yeah. And, um, there was nothing but happiness and hope. Um, but yeah, it was just kind of a going from one small town to another it's funny saying this but it was still a culture shock yeah but uh yeah then a couple months in i just went to my husband and said you know i i've always dreamed of opening a business and it looks like there's a lot of that happening around owasso right now Yeah, there really is Uh, i don't have anything else to do yeah (laughs) i think now would be a good time so and so and that's what led you to three years ago that's what led you to aviator jane we'll talk about that in a second um it's interesting you know my wife also met me and my wife's not from here either i brought her oh. to us but she's all the way from new york wow so it was a big culture shock and she's not from new york city she's from upstate but she just kind of lived in the country grew up on a farm so coming here was a big change yeah. for her so i guess the advantage is you could be home in an hour but mm-hmm. it takes her like 10 hours to get yeah, home but big. she loves a while so we actually moved back to new york uh in 2008 when the recession hit and we lived there for four years, and she missed Owasso. She wanted to come back wow. even more than I did. So she loves Owasso, and it really is a great place to it raise is. a family. And uh, it's just familiar, you yeah. know. It's uh, Very it's special cool. town. Yeah. So right in the heart of downtown, we have this beautiful little boutique retail store that has a lot of different things called Aviator Jane. And the name is intriguing. <laughs> um, and so I want to talk about, for example, before we get into what Aviator Jane is, um, what you, you kind of said you told your husband that you were thinking you wanted to start some sort mm-hmm. of a business but w- what made you want to start that particular type of business and it was it something you had always thought about or was it something you thought would be good for this market or what kind of led you to that point yeah um for some reason i from a very young age was uh really intrigued with home decor mm-hmm. it wasn't anything that i grew up in mm-hmm. it's not anything that anyone in my family is particularly good at yeah um I I don't really know where it came from I I think maybe because it was not what I grew up in yeah when I would go to my little friends houses as if you can imagine a little seven eight year old girl I was just intrigued by these beautifully decorated Mm -hmm. homes and I would come home and I'd rearrange everything and (laughs) Uh, yeah, it was, it it was just something that really stuck with me. So there was that interest that hit me somewhere along the line. Mm -hmm. And then, um, honestly, I could say it's been a, a good, like 10 years before I started the business. It was a, it was something that just haunted me. I mean, this idea of opening a business, I didn't even know what kind of business, but I would drive around Midland and I'd see these empty storefronts and I would literally just park my car in front of them 
and I would just stare at it and dream and <laughs> just think, I would love to own some, a place like this where people so came. Cool. I don't yeah. know what I would offer. I don't yeah. know what I'd sell. Um, but it was just something that wouldn't leave me alone. Did it seem in your mind like that's bigger than me? Like I can't do something like oh, that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think Absolutely. a lot of people deal with that. Like they see something they would dream about and they think, oh, I could never do that. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, I, it wasn't anything any of my friends were doing. No one in my family owned a business. Um, and yet it was something that I couldn't, I, I kind of forget about it and get distracted with another hobby or yeah. something, but it would always come back up. Yeah. And, uh, so yeah, it, it was something that always followed me around yeah. and I just didn't know what to do with it. And coupled also with the fact that I was so, I had such a full life in Midland. It wasn't even in the cards. So I just assumed yeah. this desire of mine is probably just one of those. It's a pipe dream. Yeah, yeah. it's just <laughs> something that I'm, I daydream about, it, but yeah. it will never happen. Yeah. Well, that's cool. That's cool to hear that. Because, you know, some people assume that business owners had this like 15 year plan and we thought about it all through. And, and really, you know, what I've learned along the way is sometimes you, you know, everybody has some sort of a dream. Right. You just kind of got to go after it. I mean, looking back on what I started with and how I started, I'm like, how in the world did I even start a business like I was not ready I didn't know anything yeah. I still feel like I don't know a lot and uh, you just kind of learn along the way but but you know 90% of the battle is just saying I'm going to do this yeah. I'm going to do this and I'm going to find a way to do it That's I'm going to make it happen to just determination and I think passion about something is what drives that yeah so <clears throat> the name of the store is Aviator Jane mm -hmm. I've been in there many times uh our office administrator Brenda is like her favorite place to go she's <laughs> always buying Brenda. cool little things for around the office <laughs> and I bought a lot of gifts in there um, but tell our audience how you came up with the name and what is exactly Aviator Jane okay yeah so Aviator Jane it's funny how many like grown men come into the shop thinking we sell plane parts <laughs> we've even had people come in thinking we were like a travel agency um, but huh. it definitely is a name that's not very clear and we wanted it that way. Yeah. Um, but so we call ourselves a home goods boutique. We mm -hmm. offer qu quite a few other things, but at, at the heart of what we are is we're a home goods boutique. Mm -hmm. uh, we love making beautiful homes, beautiful spaces. And, um, so the name though comes from this, the fact that we truly, truly believe that no matter how beautiful a home is. No matter how beautiful you you decorate a space, that it's the people within the home sure. that make it a home or mm -hmm. make it a place you want to be. No question about that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So um, we, we really, when my husband and I sat down and thought, okay, this is something we really do want to chase after. Yeah. What's the name going to be? Let's huh. start there. What's the heart, the mission uh, going to be? And so we talked, we couldn't stop talking about family and how much we loved our home growing up and yeah. how much like we would not be who we are today if it weren't for our moms and our dads and our grandparents and our cousins and our siblings and everything we faced within our, our homes. It mm -hmm. shaped who we are. So we couldn't stop talking about that. And so we, we came up with a name that honored our upbringing. So aviation is a huge part of both of our families. My right. dad's a pilot. He's been a pilot since before I was born. And uh, Nick's dad is a pilot. And hmm. interestingly enough, they are both private uh, pilots and they mm -hmm. fly out of the same little airport in Saginaw and they have for years and years and really? years. And they'd pass each other at the same airport. They knew of each other, probably never realized yeah. that they'd Connected become, the dots, yeah. that they'd become <laughs> in-laws and share grandchildren someday. But uh, <laughs> yeah, just kind of an interesting fact. Um, and then also Nick's mom and dad his mom, by the way, does have her pilot's license as well. Really? She doesn't practice it, but they ran the Owasso Airport for many, many years. And so Nick literally grew up at an airport. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, aviation just reminds us of our dads picking mm -hmm. him up, dropping him off, getting excited for him to come home. Mm -hmm. He'd call in and check up on us. And so it's a huge part of our upbringing. And uh, then the name Jane is a family name on both sides as well. My grandmother was Jane, uh, and then several of my cousins, their middle name, Jane, Jane, named after her. And then my mother-in-law is Marsha Jane. Wow. So it's just our quirky little That's way so cool. of honoring yeah. the people within the homes that we, we love spending time on. And That's so cool. Yeah. yeah, I never knew that. And that is a 
cool. I mean, the name itself is cool. The logo is cool. It's eye catchy. Um, but I didn't realize it paid an homage to, yes. you know, family. So that's very, very cool. Thank you. And the fact that it's a home goods store. Yeah. Um, but you're also a picker, right? You go and pick oh, yeah. a lot of the stuff in the store. You yeah. pick it out yourself. Do you pick out everything? Oh, yeah, I do. 100%. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you, you know, if you're in the area, you have to go to the store. There's such a variety of neat little things there. And uh, there's a lot of uh, reef, uh, re, what do you call it, reclaimed or refurbished, refurbished yeah. furniture. Yeah. Take a 40-year-old dresser and make it look brand new mm-hmm. with some cool colors. And so you're very talented. And you have good taste, so oh, everything you. you go in there. I love the Kalamazoo candles; uh, <laughs> those keep our office smelling good all the time. So, um, but I'm certain that along this journey, like you said, you know, you dreamed and you thought of something, never really thought that might be what you would do, but then you know it happened, and uh, you guys put a lot of thought into it, and now you're doing something that you enjoy and you're passionate about. Yeah. But I know for a fact, just in talking to you and your husband, that you guys had some obstacles and some. Oh. Definitely had some setbacks and trying to get there. You know, it didn't just happen overnight. So right. I want to talk a little bit about uh, overcoming some of the setbacks that you had or some of the obstacles you had to jump over to kind of get where, you know, get the business off the ground even. Right. Yeah. So like I said, I've, I, I never had a business mm-hmm. before. I had never done anything like this before. So this was all brand new. Um, so we decided to start Aviator Jane in January, and then in February, we found out we were pregnant, Yay. which was not part of the plan. <laughs> we, we wanted to be parents, but we wanted to wait a couple of years. We had just yeah. been married six months. Mm-hmm. So Same thing happened to us. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure yeah. at the rate we're going, we'll end up with six, at yeah. least six kids. Too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, we wouldn't trade it for the world. Oh, People no, look at us like it, we're crazy, it, but... I'm telling you, like the older we get, especially like we don't want to go out on a Friday night. We don't want to hang out. With, we just want to hang out with our kids. It is the and most. Now, yeah. And now our older kids are getting to the point where they don't want to hang out with us. So, <laughs> you know, it's a full circle, yeah. but we wouldn't trade it for the it world. It is the most fun we have ever had. Yeah. It, it adds so much meaning and purpose and joy to everything. Mm-hmm. There is never a day that is too bad because we know we have them. Right. We have each other. So they just they've add an immeasurable amount of joy to our life. Um, but that's not to say that it's just been smooth sailing oh, for and sure. <laughs> easy. And my gosh, I was up all night last night with a teething baby. <laughs> mm-hmm. I remember those so, days. Yeah. So, um, my youngest is eight now, so we're past the teething okay. in the car seats, oh, yeah. but I remember those days we're, very well. We're just, we're in the thick of it. You're just getting started. We are. It so, gets better. <laughs> as good as it is now, it gets better. I believe it. So we, yeah, we decided that we wanted to pull the trigger on Aviator Jane. Now was the time. But then we found out we're expecting our first baby. So we were not only completely thrown, but we had already started kind of taking some steps forward. So instead of backing out, we just said, because I, 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 as much as I love being a mom and always knew I wanted to be a mom, to be honest, I had a full on like panic yeah <laughs> few days like 48 hours of panic yeah. like well I've never done this before right I'm, I'm going into two things I've never done yes so um yeah there's a lot of crying and and like what what are we doing what what do we do right um and Nick just kind of grabbed me by the shoulders and just said don't forget this being coming a parent is the greatest thing we will ever do. Yeah, throw away every awesome. business idea, throw away every dream of ours. This is the greatest dream. Yeah. So back perspective. yes, exactly. So I immediately started getting excited, but you know, we weren't about to back out of our idea to, to start this business. So we set our clocks and said, we got nine months yeah. to make this thing <laughs> work because we can do a lot with, with the baby within, but right. as soon as that baby's born, that's, we know that that's going to change a lot and make things harder. So yeah. we gave ourselves a nine month, uh, time clock. And, um, not only did we travel that whole summer doing ministry, but I was pregnant and, um, we were still newlyweds figuring out life together and starting this business. And the, the first thing that really, um, you know, it sounds a lot harder than it was, but there was so much grace, so much help, so much. Um, it just all kind of came together. But we we opened our doors on September 16th and our first daughter was born a month early and she came <laughs> four days after, after our grand the, opening. After the opening. Wow. And not only that, but she ended up in the NICU for a month. 
Oh man. So yeah, talk about like just going from yeah. Then you start to question like, am I doing the right thing here? Oh. Yeah, you just everything the yeah. doubts come in and yeah, because I I gave birth to two babies that week. Yeah, it was two dreams that, you know, I I literally gave literally and metaphorically gave birth to these two babies in one week and, um, and we ended up spending the first month of business ownership at a hospital yeah. in Lansing. And wow. so, but I know it sounds like chaos, but really my staff is so incredible. They stepped right up and they said, Mandy, you be with your baby. You be with your family. We've already divvied out shifts. We've got things covered. So they immediately Amazing. just having an incredible team is like for key. sure. You can't beat it. Oh yeah. So yeah, we, that was the first thing. Yeah. Well, the, we the neat thing is, I mean, the store didn't miss a beat. Like, I didn't, and I probably, a lot of people don't know, like nobody knew that was going on. I mean, we just kind of enjoyed the store. And <laughs> so, I mean, what a blessing to know that you had good people that oh, would come we did. in, but yeah, it didn't, didn't miss a beat from our perspective. You probably know what didn't happen sure. or what should happen, but yeah, from, I think from the customer perspective, it was a, a smooth opening. That's so. good to know. Yeah. <laughs> So <clears throat> what do you think, and I know you said you have other obstacles and things that you had to overcome and, uh, you know, I want to talk about those as well, but yeah. what do you think it was or it is that gives you and gave you the strength, the ability to kind of push through that and say, I'm going to continue to move forward. Yeah. I'm going to continue to press. And I know you mentioned your husband being a great support system oh, and yeah. putting things in perspective and that's invaluable. Oh yeah. I know a lot of people listening say, well, I'm a single mom or I'm a single dad or I don't have the support system and that that's that's an advantage when you have someone mm -hmm. that's in your corner for sure yeah but um but then there's also a lot of people that have never gone through the things that you guys have gone through so what do you think it was that just said we can do this what was it that gave you the strength and the and the ability yeah well um it's so true tony of like i i feel like the luckiest person in the world to be married to my husband <clears throat> whenever i start to to panic or freak out about things. He is just such a rock and, a and really has a way of just stilling my mind, bringing things back into focus. He's a very calm person. He is. Like I've never seen him like his emotions have always been exactly the <laughs> same. I've never it. seen a different I, emotion. I, I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I needed someone like him as yeah. it turns out. <laughs> so, um, being married to having a, a partner in your life or a team in your life that just is able to still you and bring the perspective back to where it should be is so important. Yeah. Um, but also we have such a, um, a walk with Jesus Christ. Like we honestly, things just never feel that far gone. Yeah. And we honestly, we He's just always in your corner uh, always. And we never feel hopeless. We never feel like there's not a way out of this. Mm -hmm. Of course we've had those moments, but at the end of the day, you know, we know we're going to be okay. Yeah. We yeah. could lose everything and we're going to be okay. Yeah. So it's just kind of that mindset, like to not hold on so tightly to everything and putting mm -hmm. all my hope in my business or even in my husband. I, like he, he can't hold my hope. Right. Only Jesus Absolutely. can. Absolutely. And it's not fair to put that on another human being. Right. Yeah. You know, there's a verse in the Bible that talks about peace that passes all understanding. Mm -hmm. And there have been so many times in my business and in my life, again, six children and everything else we have going on. Um, where I should have been just in a major catastrophe mode, like freaking right. out, like the world's coming down. And I've always just kind of been like, it's going to be all right. Yeah. It's going to work out. And it's not even something that I purpose to do. Right. Like, I don't say I'm just going to be a super calm person. Like, um, but I think God just gives you a peace mm -hmm. that passes understanding. Like, I don't understand why I feel okay about this, but at the end of the day, I realized that I'm going to heaven. Yeah. I got my family around me. God's always yeah. taking care of me. There's a promise that he's going to supply my needs. Yeah. So I just don't worry. And that's something that can, I think, only come from him. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're listening out there, um, you know, here's two people really talking about life experience and something that's really helped us. And I could, t I could list hundreds of other people, but a real relationship with God has been a tremendous, it's been the rock in my life and I know in your guys' mm -hmm. lives as well. And it's that one thing that you can always count on. Yeah. He never leaves you nor forsake you. So um, it's just amazing to hear somebody else. Yeah. One of the things I really think is neat about Owasso is we had Josh Adams on the show, who is uh, our Main Street manager. And it's amazing how many of our downtown businesses uh, are believers. 
yeah. and not afraid to talk about their faith. And, you know, we're not preaching outside of our stores and we're not, you know, forcing that on people, but we're not ashamed that, you know. Well, it just when he, when you have a real walk with Jesus Christ, it's not some it's not this switch you turn on on Sundays. He, you know, if it's a walk and it's a real relationship, he ends up in your business. Oh, for he sure. ends up in, in your community and how you talk and how you treat people. And it, it, yeah, it's not just this switch we turn on and off. Right. But That's who we are. Yeah. That's who we are. So <clears throat> now I know we've referenced this, but both you and your husband are entrepreneurs. Uh, Nick and his friend John are the owners of Foster Coffee Company in Owasso. Check them out. It's a great craft coffee shop right located in the central, the, the heart of downtown Owasso. Um, a lot of people were, were uh, skeptical when they found out a cool little craft coffee shops coming into town. And, you know, we already have these other coffee shops, but mm. it's done extremely well. They opened their second location about a year, year and a half ago mm. in Flint, Michigan, also doing very well. And they're getting ready to open their third location in Lansing, Michigan, Oof. the capital. They're also brewing. I was up at the hospital the other day with my father having surgery, and I saw there's a big Foster Coffee station <laughs> there. And uh, you guys are now roast. They're they're now roasting their own beans, yeah. and they're they're selling online. And so, the business is doing very very well. So I know that keeps him extremely busy. Well, yeah. He's a hard man to reach sometimes. <laughs> and then on top of that, again, the two kids that are young. And when uh -huh. kids are young, they're very needy. They can't do anything for themselves. So you have to do everything. <laughs> right. And then you guys are both uh, musicians, and you travel around from time to time mm -hmm. and sing at other churches and do praise and worship. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's just so much all by itself. And I'm sure there's other things and not to mention, uh, your husband's on the city council and you guys are involved in several civic and community organizations. How in the world do you balance it all? Well, it helps that we are so passionate about every single one of those things you just mentioned. Yeah. None of those feel like a chore. They're not obligatory. All right. It's not a drag. Mm -hmm. We love all of those and I think when you really love what you do there's an energy for sure there's a clarity for sure there's just this strength that that kind of fuels you every day to face those things and mm -hmm. it I, I I feel so sorry for the the person who has the one thing going on in their life but they hate it yeah and they are exhausted mm -hmm. all the time it drains you and it feels like too much yeah. that one thing so uh but I I think our capacity is a lot bigger than we give it credit for um in that no question about in, it. in yeah, that absolutely. i really believe that you can put a lot on your plate and live a very full peaceful life with great relationships when it's what you really love and it's it's mm -hmm. what is in your heart to yeah. do yeah you hear that all the time if you go on if you're on social media you always see these little video clips about pursue your passion do yeah. something you love and and, and maybe you're listening today and you're like, I, I don't even know how to go about doing that. Yeah. And, you know, I don't think there's any pad answer to that. You, no. you have to determine what is it that makes you happy. Boil it all down. Sit down and think, about, number one, what am I good at? What do I love to do? Yeah. Can I turn that into a career? Right. Is there a possibility? And I would say in the in the the age of the Internet, you can turn just about anything into it's a career. True. Just about anything. Yeah. And then start doing a little research, um, you know, spend several months just doing research online, watching yeah. YouTube tutorials, taking some free webinars. Um, it doesn't even cost a lot of money. Get to know it and then go after it. But yeah. it first starts with saying, I can, mm -hmm. I can do this. And then like Mandy said, um, when you are doing something you're passionate about, it just doesn't seem like it's chaotic. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, I have people, probably the number one question I get from people that know me is, how in the world do you keep such a busy schedule? Yeah. And to me, there are times when it seems sure. like crazy. Like today, this this week, we've had something going every evening. I'm also uh, running a, voluntarily for our Christian school, I'm running a basketball camp this week from noon to three, right in the middle of the day every day. And we've been going, my wife and I are right in the middle of this six-week challenge we're doing from Fitness Coliseum. So we're working out every day. Our mm -hmm. diet's changed. Kids are going everywhere in the summer. They got yeah. camps and friends and all these things. And yeah, just today it kind of hit me like I felt really tired, but you know, took a little few minutes to gather myself and yeah. I feel great. Oh yeah. And so it's not that we don't have moments of feeling like overwhelmed, but overall, like I don't feel like I live an overwhelming life. I feel like I live a very fulfilled life Yeah. and I enjoy what I do. And I've had, I've had some very lucrative job offers in the past few years 
that make a lot more money than I make as a mm -hmm. small business owner. But it's not even a temptation because I'm fulfilled in what I do. I'm yeah. happy about it. So I think that if you're listening, you have to really boil your life down. What do I really need to make me happy? Mm -hmm. Stop looking at what everybody else is saying going to make you happy. Like that nice boat or that nice car or that nice house or those nice clothes or yeah. whatever. Now, maybe those things will make you happy. You have to determine what that is. But people start listening to everybody else and they determine I can only be happy if I have what they have. Mm -hmm. And I think social media has really affected that in people's Absolutely. lives. And I think stop, turn off social media for a couple of days, a couple mm -hmm. of weeks and really think what makes me happy? Yeah. What does success look like to me? Yeah. And, and don't focus on, on the dollar amount, exactly. what it'll make you, exactly. but what are you truly passionate about? For sure. And then when someone asks you, how do you balance it all? Like, it's a hard question for me to yeah. answer. How do I balance it all? And I think the answer you gave us perfect is that I just, I'm passionate about what I do. So it doesn't seem like I'm juggling 87 things. Yeah. It just seems like I get to do something I enjoy all the time. Mm -hmm. And again, I don't want to paint this picture that there's never moments of stress sure. or you know, fatigue yeah. or feeling overwhelmed. Oh yeah. That's part of it. That, but yeah, by no means is just because we're passionate about these things doesn't mean that we don't have bad days. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I could tell a lot of stories about bad days and even bad seasons. For sure. Um, but yeah, we, we love what we do. And I think the other thing about living a balanced life is it, it's not living a balanced life is not something that just happens because you want it to happen mm -hmm. and i'm aware that i should be living a balanced life it's something that you have to be aggressive about mm -hmm. it's something you have to talk about with your family no and question. your partner and it's something that nick and i have have really had to sit down and schedule things we've listed you know here's our top three top five priorities in our life mm -hmm let's start scheduling these right you have to schedule right. it it sounds boring and it's not sexy but like you if you want something to happen in your life um and you want to be good at something whether it's a hobby or parenting or your marriage mm -hmm. or a business sometimes you got to just put it on the calendar yep. and set aside and time it. and it's a non-negotiable yeah. like fridays for as busy as we are we've decided every friday is family Friday for us yeah. and we put our phones away and we don't work we just play with the girls we go for walks we catch up on cleaning and laundry maybe catch up on a little sleep even <laughs> <laughs> probably not with little probably ones actually probably not yeah, not with little ones not really <laughs> but yeah I mean it it's something that you just have to be very intentional mm -hmm. with yeah. so if you want to accomplish in life a lot in life then you're gonna have to get really intentional with life yeah I think um, what you mentioned about prioritizing things, you have to mm -hmm. determine what are, what are my yeah. hard, like hard, I'm not saying no to these things. These right. things have to happen and, and prioritizing those things. And I know even for my wife and I, you know, I think probably the first 10 years of my career in hospitality, I ran hotels, um, and probably the first 10 years, um, not even probably, I can take probably that. the first 10 years, which was a, the first part of our marriage, uh, I think in a lot of ways, I was almost an absentee father, absentee mm. husband. And I thought in my mind, I got to work hard to provide for my family. That's what they need. They need mm. money. They need to be able to have things that, that I didn't have growing up. And what I realized is, you know, eight, nine years in, my wife's not happy. My kids don't get to see me. I don't get to see them. I'm not that happy. And it really started to make me evaluate what, what in the world am I doing here? Yeah. You know? I was always very motivated by accomplishment more than I was even motivated by money. I liked to accomplish things. And so I had a ton of success in the hospitality field, but I realized it was a consuming lifestyle and I had to make a change. Mm. And so I had to sit down, like you said, and, and calendar. I made a list of what are the things that are the most important in my life? Yeah. Who am I not going to disappoint? And <coughs> excuse me, that's kind of what I want to talk about now, yeah. because when you have a busy schedule, when you have a lot of plates to juggle, it's inevitable that you're going to have to sometimes let somebody down. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to disappoint somebody. Now, the goal is never to disappoint anybody, but inevitably you will disappoint somebody. Sure. So how do you determine in your life who you're going to say no to and who, what you're going to say no to and who you're going to disappoint? Yeah, no, saying no has 
been one of my biggest struggles. Me too. I, I think I struggle with wanting to please people and make everybody happy. And so I find myself overextending and overcommitting. And then ultimately letting more people down because right. you just can't, can't do it. be there for everyone all the time. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, it's a, a question I'm still figuring out myself mm-hmm. and something that Nick and I talk a lot about, especially with our friendships. We have amazing friends in Midland, um, in here in Owasso. We have them all over the place. And, you know, we stopped because we've been in a, pretty busy season it feels like we've been in a busy season for the last three yeah. years yeah. but and you, have. you know yeah it, it really is we're fortunate to have um very gracious loving friends and um i think when you have such a deep rooted relationship with friends and family they get it yeah that that's great but um again i it comes back to just scheduling time Mm -hmm. for all of these things and Mm -hmm. it's not that we're saying flat out no to people but but we are at the same time yeah certain things have to take precedent yeah absolutely yeah for us um you know my wife and I literally we sat down and made a list and, and and I spearheaded it because you know my wife uh was probably the one feeling neglected even more than I was I was probably doing the neglecting um and I'm a pretty low maintenance guy, so I didn't feel neglected the way she did. Sure. I felt like I was doing my husbandly, fatherly duty, you know. Yeah. But I sat down and I, I made a list. Said, okay, who am I not going to disappoint? Mm-hmm. Who am I not going to? Who's that list consist of? And so I made it in order, and I just determined I'm not going to disappoint my family anymore. From the standpoint of choosing work over them, mm-hmm. or choosing life over them, or choosing my own activities over them. Now I'm I'm going to always disappoint people. Sure. I'm human. But I'm not going to put them down the totem pole. They're going to be at the top. What does my family need? And I'm going to, and I realize more than they need my money, and say my money, more than they need money, they need me. They need me to be present. My kids need a dad. My husband, my wife needs a husband. And so I determined I'm not going to let my family down. Another thing that we're very passionate about when we first got married, we spent several years in full time Christian ministry. I was a youth pastor and then an associate pastor. I've always had a passion for ministry Mm -hmm. and I've determined I'm not going to let my ministry down. So I, right now I teach uh, the college kids at our church. Uh, I'm the volunteer athletic director at our school, which gives me a lot of opportunities for mentorship. Um, And then I'm involved in all of the digital media at church, all the live broadcasting. And these are the things that my pastor has asked me to do and something that I'm passionate about. So I've determined even in my business, there was a, uh, there was a time that I remember about, I was about a year and a half in, and the business wasn't doing very well. And I had left a really good job with six kids, getting a paycheck every Friday, didn't have a ton of money in the bank, got a small loan to start a business. And then you have to make it work or you don't get mm-hmm. a paycheck. I mean, there's just no like right. guarantee check on Friday. About a year and a half in, I started questioning, like, man, did I do the right thing? The cash wasn't there, the accounts weren't coming in, the sales weren't happening. And I started just working harder. I'm just going to force these things Mm -hmm. to happen. And I started saying no to a lot of opportunities at church. And I started saying no to a lot of opportunities for ministry. And I just kind of felt in my heart that I wasn't doing the right thing. I was living an unbalanced life. Mm -hmm. And I had made this promise to God. And I determined that whenever I'm given an opportunity for ministry, I feel like if God gives you an opportunity for ministry, you can, of course, say no to it. But I think if God gives you an opportunity, you should take it unless you're physically unable to do it. Right. But I just determined when my pastor or my church asks something of me, they need me to do, I'm just going to do it. Hmm. Yeah. I'm going to do it. And if that means I got to stay up really late and finish work, because my, my job is nice and that I can do it anytime, anywhere. Yeah. I just need an internet connection. Right. We do a lot of digital media, so I don't have to keep certain office hours. But I just determined I'm going to do the ministry thing. Yeah. And I made that commitment and there were times where I got asked to do something. I didn't share that with him or with anybody, mm-hmm. just determined. And there were times where I got asked to do something. I'm like, I don't have time, but I'm like, no, I stop. And I would go do that yeah. and I would prioritize that. And man, God bless that. It was mm-hmm. unbelievable how all of a sudden things just started to turn around. Right. And then all of a sudden we, I, I, we got 
uh, to the point where I needed to hire an employee and then I needed space and we got a really cool space at the exchange building and then we grew even more and needed to hire another person and then we got to move here to this cool space in the armory and then now we've hired uh, f- three or four people um, and the business is just doing well. We're not, yeah. we're not uh, you know, no one's getting rich here but the business is doing well and it's taking care of my family. I have other people that are able to take care of their families yeah. and it's all because I decided what needed to be priority in my life. Yeah. I'm not going to let my family down. I'm not going to let my ministry down. And it's all worked out. And yeah. so you have to determine what those priorities are in Absolutely. your life. I'm not saying my two are your two. Right. But I just determined to do that. And yeah. it's worked out for me. And you know, like what, what we've been talking about with saying no to people, um, it's, it's not even necessarily that we're saying no to someone, but maybe in this season, right. um, our, you know, your job might need to look a little different right. or, you know, your relationship with your friends. It's not that I'm saying no, it's just for this season, it, it might look yeah. a little different. Um, for example, you know, we're talking about doing ministry and how that's a, <clears throat> that's a priority in our family too. For sure. And so Nick and I, for many years, even when we were just buddies, we traveled and abandoned, did worship. And that that's how I spent all of my summer for the last 10 years is doing this. So mm-hmm. I, I honestly haven't had a summer uh, <laughs> where I wasn't traveling and, and working in ministry. And, right. um, and, you know, so talking about learning how to say no and when to say no and when seasons in your life change and what to do with that. Nick and I, when our first daughter was born, we really felt in our heart that we need to pull back on traveling. And we had this whole conversation about saying no. Cause mm-hmm. like I said, I've got this tendency to just say yes to everything. Me too. If it seems like a good decision. I love that person. I love that thing. I'm just going to say yes and commit. Right. But Nick has really helped me. Um, he, he just kind of opened my eyes to the fact, well, when you say yes to this, you are saying no, no something to else. something else. Absolutely. So what are we saying no to now when we spend our entire summer traveling? And um, So maybe the better way to look at it is what are you saying yes to? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's more of a positive way of saying it. What are you right. saying yes to? Right. Because it and, is causing you to say no to something And else. here's the thing, though, is because we, we, we are Christians and, and ministry is a priority. And there was this guilt that was kind of following me with turning down these uh, opportunities and invitations, we started saying no. Mm -hmm. Um, but the first thing is we went to the Lord and we just said, Lord, help us really have clarity on what we're supposed to be doing with our time. Right. Cause we could say yes to everything and we probably could pull it off. Right. But what are we supposed to be doing? Just because it's a good thing doesn't mean it's a God thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and so there, but there was this guilt to saying no to these churches and these friends that I loved mm-hmm. and these, these opportunities that almost out of habit, I was just saying yes to, cause I've been yeah. doing it for 10 years. Yep. So, but, but now we had this tiny little baby Yeah. and, and that's gotta and be your priority <laughs> Two businesses. And it's not that we were saying no to the Lord and this call on our life to do ministry, but we just realized maybe ministry looks different in this season. For sure. Maybe it doesn't look like a traveling worship team. Maybe our ministry is being good parents. Yeah. And maybe it is a having a business and interacting with the people that come into my store, my home, and investing in our friends and our community, investing in Owasso. Maybe right now that is what ministry is supposed to look like for the Pydeck family. Yeah. That's amazing. And I I think that the key there is, and you've said it multiple times, is understanding the season of life you're in. Yeah. Because when we had little ones, real little ones, we were in a different season of life. We couldn't do a lot of the things that we're able to do now. And so I think a part of it is everyone adjusting to the seasons that God has you in uh, and adapting to that, but also understanding it. Like my priorities might change over the next few years. You know, I'm getting ready to take a daughter to college in a week and a half in Florida. It's going to change the whole dynamic of our family and I got to pay for college. (laughs) Um, and so, you know, I expect that this new season of life where I have a college student, it's going to change some things. And so how does that cause me to go about my day today? And I think 
it's not like a one time you decide this is my priorities and that's it for the rest of my life. Yeah. I think understanding the season of life that you're oh, in. Oh, yeah. And like I said, I mean, when you uh, have children, that is a ministry. That, that, yeah. that's, like, that's, that's the best ministry you could ever have. Um, and then, you know, like I said, when God opens up and you have more free time, maybe that's a time to go back and, and look at doing some other things. Yeah. But just determining what season you're in, I think, is, is a tremendously wise way of putting it yeah and i hope that you uh that will help you out there uh, i want to take just a second here because as we're talking about this you know we're talking about all the different things we do but one of my pet peeves and i try not to let it bother me too much because <laughs> you know it's just a pet peeve mm-hmm. i know people really feel it but i it seems like every person i talk to today mm-hmm. i mean you hear it all the time it's the phrase i don't have enough time and i think to myself I know <laughs> what you spend most of your time doing. I know how many times you've talked to me about some Netflix show that you binge watched right. or some video game that you're on a certain level on or how many Instagram followers you have or you told me that you had seven hours a day of screen time on your phone. Like, <laughs> And I'm not criticizing you for doing those things. If that's what you want to do, if that's what, that's fine. But then you use the same, in the same breath, you say, I don't have time to do what you do or do a, a start a business or to be involved in ministry. And so you just <laughs> don't, I think people look at their leisure time and they value it very highly. Um, but wh- how do you feel about that phrase? I don't have enough time. How do you allow that to sink in? Well, <laughs> I, I know I feel your pain, Tony. I definitely hear that a lot. And I just want to whip out my calendar and say, you want right. to say that again? Let's to my compare face? schedules. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I always tell my I wife, I'm like, I would compare my schedule to just about anybody. I know. And I, I, yeah, it can, it can be irritating, but at the same time, I, I, I understand that, that they really do feel that way. They feel it. And everybody has certain capacities. And I think your capacity, our capacities, it's a muscle. Mm-hmm. You're either used to filling it. Yep. You're either used to having one thing and that's too much for some people. Mm-hmm. So it, it all depends on your capacity. Yeah. And, and so. But you can build it. Yeah, absolutely. Just like you can build a muscle, and, you can build your capacity. That's it. And I think like you were saying about screen time and Netflix. I mean, I, yeah, I think if we looked on, I think there's a, something on our phone where it can actually tell you how it much does. time you spend a day. Yeah. I think it's important to to just be aware of yeah. where your time is going. Yep. Um, before you, before you um, retreat to, I don't yeah. have enough time, really yeah. evaluate what you're spending your time doing. Yeah, before you say that, yeah. like be aware, not unaware. Right. Be aware of where your time is, is actually going. And I think you might just see on paper, because you might be feeling completely overwhelmed with the one thing you have on your plate, but it might be healthy for some of us to, myself included, I've been feeling really convicted that Nick and I, um, you know, we, we have a Netflix show that we really like right now. Yeah. And it's like when you look at, at it, yeah. it's like, wow, we've, <laughs> we just spent two hours sitting on the couch doing nothing. Yeah. And I'm all but you for need that rest. Sometimes. You yeah. have to have rest. You <laughs> have sure. to take a break. Um, but sometimes it's like, wow, that, that, that but was a But when it comes down time. to it, you can say no to the Netflix show when you know you have something you have yeah, to do. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. But it's it's all about, it don't just, I think we should be careful to say, I don't have the time. Right. That's not it. Because right. you have 24 hours in a day. Right. I have 24 hours in a day. He has 24 hours in a day. Yeah. We all have the same amount of time. Right. But it's all about that capacity muscle yep. that you're either working or you're not. Yeah. So... And I think that's what it comes down to. And I want to encourage people to don't don't be a victim of your circumstances. Yeah. Like we, we all do have them. I mean, like I said, me and Mandy have spent the last 35 minutes describing our circumstances. I mean, there are certainly times where I want to say I don't have time. And there are certain times where I say I'm not able to do that right now. We talked about saying no. Mm-hmm. But I would say if you're listening today and you have something that you're passionate about, something that you've been wanting to do, Number one, don't go work eight hours for somebody else and then come home and not pursue your own passion. Yeah. You got more time after work than you have during work. <laughs> Number one, so, so do it, but stop giving yourself excuses. And I'm not saying you don't really feel it. I'm not saying you're not busy. What I'm saying is you can do it. Mm-hmm. You can do it. You just have to commit in your mind that you're going to go after it and you're going to take the time and make the time. And maybe you will watch a little less Netflix. Maybe you will 
turn off the social media a little bit more. Maybe you will go to bed at a different time later at night and not get as much sleep. I don't know what it is. Maybe you won't spend Saturday at the lake. You'll spend Saturday trying to. Yeah. And, and, and there's no like, there's no like checklist of things you have to do. All I'm saying is you got to start getting rid of the excuses. And if you put time into something you're passionate about, it will be worth it. I yeah. promise you that. And I believe too there there will be a sacrifice made. So you just dis- determine when that is and what it is. So um, Nick and I talk a lot about, because we, we work a lot of long hours. We wake up early. We go to bed late mm-hmm. and work very long hours. And um, so, but we talk and con- continually remind ourselves, if we can just work hard now, stay focused, mm-hmm. sa- and make uh, some sacrifices here and there. For this season. For this season, there will be a day that's not too far away that w- we will have the freedom. Yeah. What we've built today will will give us freedom tomorrow. Yep. So you you got to think about game. that. Yeah. Play so, the long game. So uh, sacrificing Netflix and Instagram today, right. that's that's worth it. Instead right. of the the other hand, where I never make that sacrifice today, yeah. and I just take the easy way out. Yeah. Um, it will be a sacrifice. 20 years from now when I'm still not living my dream, still doing the same old mundane thing and being mm-hmm. tired every day, even though I've got those, that one thing on my plate, but it's not what I'm passionate about. So I'm just exhausted and yep. dissatisfied. That's a sacrifice that I don't want to take. I'd make, rather yep. sacrifice Netflix and Instagram today yep. than sacrifice my dream well, in the future. Well, my, my wife and I have taken some heat, even from close family and friends, just about the schedule that we keep. Like, why do you guys, you're going to burn yourselves out. Why do you run so much? And my wife and I, you know, a lot of people say you had six kids, you're crazy. And, you know, I'm not saying we were like super intentional for all six kids, but we also plan that, you know, what, by the time I'm 47 and my wife's 46, our last child will be going to college. And our plan is to be able to retire and travel around and do some of the things we're passionate about yeah. in our mid forties, which is not a lot of people get to do. Right. And we are definitely on path for that goal. And so for us, like making the sacrifices today for something that might be to be able to spend time with our grandkids, to be able to travel and do some of the things we yeah. enjoy, it's a worthwhile sacrifice to us. And like, like you said, you have to determine what that thing is to you, you yeah. know, And I think the problem is so many people can't even wrap their mind around what happiness looks like because they've listened to what everybody else says happiness is. And happiness really has to be defined by you. Oh, absolutely. And nobody else has to understand it and nobody else has to get it. It just has to be what makes you happy and what brings you joy and what gives you passion. And that's what you got to do. So Mm -hmm. um, I always ask this question on the show, and I know we could go on for hours about this stuff, um, but I always ask this show, at the end of it all, what does success look like to Mandy Pydeck? Oh, I dream about, we do want to have more children. Um, whenever I think about my future, yeah, Aviator Jane is a passion of mine, and I hope that it's a part of my life for a long time, but I said that about a lot of things that sure. are not a part of my life anymore, and it's okay with me. Mm-hmm. So um, as much as I I, that's something I'm really involved in, and I hope that's a part of my future. When I think about my future, what I see and what I dream about is having um, our children, um, being a close-knit family, and uh, having um, just a great relationship with our children, them having great relationships with one another. Um, I would love for our kids to work in our businesses with us if yeah. they wanted to. Yeah. I just dream about that. I, Me I mean, too. I don't know that I'll ever stop um, starting businesses and growing <clears throat> businesses. It might be Aviator Jane. It'll yeah. probably be something different mm-hmm. in the future. So um, I just know that Jesus family and business is really yeah. in my heart. Yeah. And so I see that very much being a part of my my life. Right. Well, and the good thing is, like we've said throughout the show, is Mandy's definition, uh, definition of success doesn't have to be yours. Mm-hmm. My definition of success doesn't have to be hers. But you have to determine. And that's a good question you could ask yourself today. Is what does success look like to me? Some people look at success as having a certain amount of money or a certain lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And maybe to them that is success. 
but ask yourself, is that really what I want? Think about this. Have you ever bought anything, one thing in your life that after two or three months of owning that thing that you were still excited about it or just a payment now, it's just something I have to upkeep, something I have to maintain. Every rusted out beater car that you see driving down the road, uh, the road at one time was somebody's favorite brand new vehicle. <laughs> but over time, it just became a thing. And so if things are what you want, then I'm not questioning that. Then go get those things. But ask yourself, is that really what's going to make me happy? I know a lot of wealthy people and not one of them have ever told me that their house, their car, their fame, their wealth has brought them happiness. What's brought them happiness is other things. And so you have to determine what success looks like to you. And so I think you need to stop and ask yourself that question. What is success to me? What will I feel like I've been a success at the end of my life if I accomplished that? And then go after that and do it. And don't have to follow the path that everybody else and don't take the easy way out, as we always say here. So, Mandy, this is also another question I always ask. But what is Mandy Pydex's best piece of advice? Oh, oh, man, that there's so <laughs> many things I want to say to so many different types of people. But given our specific audience, um, I would say so I've really found this has been like this alarming discovery of mine is that I it seems like one out of two people I meet now mm -hmm. young old healthy male female Christian not Christian what um one out of two people I meet seem to struggle with fear crippling fear and anxiety mm -hmm. And it's, Definitely. it seems to be this terrible epidemic that's really hitting America. I've noticed the same thing. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, so I've been just doing a lot of thinking about fear and what fears do I struggle with? What, um, yeah. It, it, are there any fears, uh, having their way in yeah. my family and marriage? And I would just say a fear has this really great way of painting a very believable picture in our minds when we're about to do something big, something adventurous, something bold. And the picture fear paints in our minds is always believable, mm -hmm. but it's rarely ever true. Yeah. And it rarely ever happens. Yeah. Um, so I would just say, like, don't let fear become a... Don't don't prepare a, a place. Factor, don't yeah. yeah. Don't prepare a place for it. Don't don't entertain it. Um, don't invite it into your home. Don't mm -hmm. invite it into the culture of your life. It it seems to be in a lot of people's uh, speaking, and how they make decisions or not make decisions. It mm -hmm. seems to be very fear driven. Mm -hmm. And I I I would say let the only thing that you fear in life. Um, just be the fear of not doing what I was called to do, what right. I was born to do. Right. Let that be the thing that haunts you. Yeah. Not the what ifs. Right. What if I take a step out? Fear of not trying. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You will, if you just step out and just kind of silence fear, Yeah. you will be so happy that you yeah. did. And the thing is you might fail, but you will learn so much. You will be a better person. You will be wiser. You will be stronger. Um, fear is, is never right. Right. It is hardly ever, ever right. right. Um, but the, the thing that, too, I've noticed about fear is, though it is just a lie, um, if we let it sit in our mind and have its way and we entertain it and give into it and let it rule our life and our decisions, that it will grow mm -hmm. and it will grow stronger and it will grip stronger. Yeah. And but you'll sit still. Yeah. So it will move, yeah. but it will yep. keep you sitting still. So I, I've just been thinking a lot about fear when it comes to parenting and yeah. and starting businesses and stepping out and being a good neighbor and being a good friend yep. and um, just putting yourself out there. And I would just say if you struggle with fear in any way or any capacity to just deliberately go against it and mm -hmm. do something in spite of your yeah. fear. Well, and, and a, again, a Bible verse comes to my mind um, because it's in me. <laughs> but there's a verse in the Bible that says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, yep. but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Imagine if you lived a life of power and of love and of a sound mind. You talk about anxiety, that's a lack of a sound mind. Mm -hmm. 
you talk about all the hate in the world, God will give you love. Yeah. God will give you power. And I'll tell you for me what, you know, there's also a verse in the Bible says that perfect love casts out fear. So loving something that you do is going to get rid of that fear, but also recognize, and maybe you're listening and you're not a Christian and you're not a believer. And so this part of the part where I talk about the Bible doesn't appeal to you. Or you don't feel like it appeals to you. But if you believe in God, which I do very strongly, his word tells us that he does not give us the spirit of fear. So when you have fear, it's not from God. And so maybe just denounce it that way. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be afraid of this because God didn't give me that spirit. So where did it come from? Yeah. And then ask him to give you that spirit of power and love and of a sound mind. What a great way to live life. So Mandy, thank you so much for being on the show today. Um, such great advice. Uh, ending the show with that about fear, I think is fantastic. And I hope I, I'm not like you. I've noticed so many people that just live in anxiety and yeah. fear and it's crippling to people yeah. and it's real. And again, we go back to that peace that we talked about. I think the reason I don't have a lot of fear of things is I, th I think God just gives me that peace and I think he can give it to anyone that's mm -hmm. listening. Um, and so it, it, lastly, before we end, if anybody is wanting to reach out to you, maybe they heard something you said that inspired them. They want to talk more about it. Uh, maybe it's a mom that wants to talk about some mom tips, yeah. or maybe they want to get a hold of Aviator Jane. They want to going to be an area and they want to check out your store. How can they find Mandy Pydick and how can they find Aviator Jane? Yeah, we're all over the place. We're, uh, they can reach us with questions comments um at aviator jane that's j-a-y-n-e -E, at gmail we're on facebook and we're on instagram and we also have a website aviatorjane.com okay so check her out and again if you're in the mid michigan area not even if you're in owasso if you're in the mid michigan area stop by owasso <laughs> have a cup of coffee from foster it's delicious they have all kinds of different types they roast their own beans from all over the world and they have, it's a craft coffee uh, shop. And so they'll do things unique. They do the pour overs. They do a lot of different lattes and espressos. I think they're getting into nitro cold brew. So it's really cool. And then stop by Aviator Jane. It's a neat experience. You'll find something that you'll love. You'll find something that you'll say, oh, so-and-so would love that. Or <laughs> I think that would be a great gift or something that you find will go great in your home or office. So again, Mandy, thank you for having us. Uh, as I always say, at the end of our show, I love my mom, and she always used to say, you can't and never could until you tried. So go out there and try something great, my friends, and don't take the easy way out. We'll see you next time. Hey, guys, if you like what you saw today, please like and subscribe for more content.